So in today's video, guys, I'm going to show you all my tips and tricks, insider information on how to build a curved wall with drywall and steel studs. You're going to love this. This is basically the kind of material that no one even knows exists unless you've been in the commercial renovation business. Um, every town that you go to, if it has any size at all, is going to have a commercial distributor for drywall, insulation, steel studs, and they're going to have these products available to you and they're more than happy to sell to the public as long as you know what you're looking for. So what this is, is this is a track. Very similar to the other steel wall that we did. I did a video showing you how to make a basement framing out of steel. You can look at the link up here if you haven't seen that yet. But basically every one of these little joints here can be compressed. Okay? And the simultaneously every joint on the other side can be expanded. And if you do that, you can make a really awesome curve. All right? Now, the purpose of the video today is to make, like, that's a pretty aggressive curve right there. Okay? We're not going to go quite that aggressive today. We're just looking for a, you know, base of the stairs. You got a curved staircase and you want to fix it up a little bit. Or maybe you're going to make a theater room in the basement. One of the greatest ways that you can make a theater room look really attractive is instead of just another square wall, put a curved wall on heading over to the door. It is so cool because it gives you a really neat space on the inside to put a beverage fridge or something like that. So if you just close this up a little bit, you'll get a nice big curve. Okay. And here's the thing. A sweeping curve like this done over a large area can be done on site. You just pull it in, throw in a screw here and there. All right. Take the other side because you got to make a top plate. You want your wall to be straight. Put it inside and overlap it on the front. Okay. And you can just kind of force all that in. Ah. And you can shape it all together. Okay. There we go. Top and bottom is almost identical now. Perfect. Because it's steel, we can put the top plate and bottom plate in independently. We don't have to attach all the frame first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up in there to the ceiling two locations and attach the frame and then I'm going to put those steel studs from those locations down to the bottom plate use the laser level we'll walk you through this it only takes a minute now if you've never worked with this material before you could spend all day long trying to figure out how to do it so that's why I'm making this video Ooh, I could use a longer bit there we go <laughs> once you see how easy it is to put this together you're going to be amazed all I'm going to do is just count in the number of sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to lock my stud into the base, the same location. Ah, there we go. There we go. Ha! Okay, when you're working with steel, you don't want to cut exact. You want to give yourself a little bit of room to play. So every one of these studs is, is shy. Lift it up just a hair, put a quarter inch, and then drive a wafer screw right in near the corner. All right. Yeah, we got all these bottoms attached. Now, the other advantage here, if you want, this track is also compatible with wood studs. So you can cut wood and screw it in with the wafer screw as well. Da -da -da -da. Okay, we're starting to get a wall. Now, in most cases, curved wall is not an exterior wall, so you don't have to worry about your placement, about insulation and that sort of thing, as much as you have to be concerned about having enough supports that you can screw your drywall in. You want to be a little bit more than one every 16 inches in the scenario. Now, but every 
seven. Uh, ideally, I want every six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah. I'm just gonna be sticking a bunch of studs in here and cutting. So when you're measuring and cutting, using a black marker helps, but having a pair of these Wisp Snipes uh, made by Crescent. They own the Wisp brand. The, these are awesome. These actually cut this line with, with your hand up and out of the way. So when I'm cutting, I'm not anywhere near the material, and I can use this as a lever to bend it in half, and then cut the rest of that material. And it keeps your hands away from everything. It's a nice safe way to work. Ugh. On your outside stud, very important, get the edge of the stud right into the groove, okay, that you see on the edge of this. So it goes down a little bit and there's a groove. You want to do that in the top and bottom, exactly the same space. Okay. Because we're going to use the laser level in just a minute to maneuver the location of the bottom of this to be exactly the same point as the top. There's that groove, and whew, that's a real heavy gauge metal, that stuff. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my laser level, put on my, my vertical line, and I'm gonna shoot it from two different locations. And the idea here, I'm using my hand here, and I can put it, that line here, okay, which is just off the edge of the track. And then I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna translate that information on the floor. Here's my line, okay? So I'm gonna just trace that on the floor. Okay, and I'll take the same thing here and I'll get off the same spot on the stud up top, okay? And here's my intersection. Okay, there's my red line. Now there's my intersection. So, with that information, I'm gonna bring this right over to the edge of my stud, is right on that intersection. And I'm going to drive a screw in it. Ah. At this point, we can use a um, fine thread drywall screw or these steel screws. These are self tappers. Okay, they're fine thread as well. I'm just going to go in the back as close to that intersection point as I can get. There we go. Drive that straight down. Do the same thing with the other side. And then I'll just throw one reference point in the middle, make sure everything is where it needs to be. But because we curve the top and bottom plates at the same time, it's going to be relatively perfect as we go along. Attica! Listen, this is, uh, this is fun because, yeah, we showed you how to frame it. But I'm going to show you innovations in drywall, application techniques, how to trim this out and put the baseboard trim on. There are special materials for every part of this job that you need to know about if you want to be successful, including how to paint it. You can't just paint like normal, so stick tuned. Got a lot of information to cover. I gotta go get the drywall. I'll be right back to put on my curved drywall. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bud. Whoo. <laughs> All right. Ugh. So the secret to this application here is the fact that we're using quarter inch drywall. Yeah, looks like drywall, right? Super thin. Because it's quarter inch, we have to use two layers. Uh, otherwise, there's just not enough density there for you to expect that wall to last long term, okay? So don't try to get away with just one of them. Three eighths might work if it's a real shallow bend, but this is a pretty aggressive curve. Using the right material is a good idea, so you won't find this at Home Depot, unfortunately. You're going to have to go to your local commercial supplier. And you ask for quarter inch drywall. Make sure you tell them how long you want it and all that kind of jazz. And you cut the first sheet in half. That's close enough. The reason we cut it in half is so we can stagger the joint, all right? Because we're going to be going with two layers, you want to stagger the joint, and you still want to add a little bit of drywall mud to the surface of this before you laminate the second sheet. You'll notice dry though. Like this is going to give you a lot of resistance. You run the risk of it snapping in half. And all I can find is Windex, but if you have a spray bottle with some water, you just give it a nice light application on the back so that this paper 
has an opportunity to soak up some moisture. Come on, spray bottle. There we go. All right. It's going to make the place smell really good, too. This is nice. <laughs> okay. Give that a second. About 30 seconds to a minute is plenty, or it should be plenty. We're going to find out together. Uh, I've had this work and I've had this fail, so bear with me. We'll see if we can get this in without breaking on us. So gentle pressure, work the top and the bottom with your knee. Here we go. And if you have to have excess off the side, you can always take your Dremel tool or your rotor zip and clean that up afterwards. Now one of the benefits of the steel, you can actually turn the stud on the back side so it fits the face of the drywall flush. All right, you don't want to be over aggressively here. You want to hit the top and the bottom before you get going. Here we are. And we'll just work our way around. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> And then after you get this piece done, do the same thing with the full sheet. And we'll set it right on top of this edge, all right? The best way to do that next sheet though, is go like this. And then leave the screw out. So you have somewhere to have it sit and it'll grab while you're bending it in. So the same thing with this sheet. Make sure you wet it down a little bit. You could also use a pail and a sponge, but you don't want it soaking wet. You don't want it going moldy or anything. You just want to get it damp. Just increases its flexibility just a touch. In the old days, we used to stick a sheet of drywall on a couple of sawhorses <laughs> and then sponge down the back and then put a box of mud on each side and bow it. <laughs> and it would take a couple hours before we got the shape that we're looking for. It would drive you nuts. But using this is just so much faster. Hey. Remember, you generally it's okay to have overhang. You can always uh, make cuts and adjustments and, and, and splice later on. The most important factor here is getting that curve, getting proper pressure all the way up top and bottom at the same time. Gotta love the smell of Windex. Good memories as a kid. I don't even know what those memories are. Not that I used to drink Windex or anything. <laughs> this is classic here. I got that screw in a little too early. I'm not following the same curve. There we go. I should probably put this one in first. Yeah, that's much better. Now you don't have to put five screws in like I did in the middle. You just want to get everything hold tight and anchored. Okay. So it holds its shape. The second layer of drywall will have plenty of screws for both sheets. You just want to make sure we have a nice consistent contour. Yeah, the weather's crazy here. It was hot, so cold this morning. I turned the heat on and now I feel like I should have the air conditioning on. Anyway, um, there are two schools of thought for the next step. If you're in an environment where you uh, would like to laminate the sheets together, you can add drywall compound to the sheet. Just do a quick skim coat and then add the next one. And that works, especially if you're not wetting it. If you're not wetting it, definitely throw the compound on. It really helps everything to, it gets stretched, and then it'll get wet in the mud, it'll relax, and then when you screw it there, it'll stay there forever. Since I'm wet in the back of the drywall anyway, I found it's not necessary. Here comes the next sheet. Alright. Okay. I'm gonna wet this one down. Okay, one of the benefits of installing all your studs level is you can find any screw. You can line up and just release your hands, 
Gravity will pull it straight down. That tells you where the set is. Okay, and then we just finish the rest of the sheet. Start in relatively the middle. Now, the screws I'm using are inch and a quarter, which is the right length for half inch of drywall, which is exactly what we have here, even though it took two applications. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to install your trim, which should be awesome. Comes in real handy. All right. This is one of these situations when it comes time for drywall, it's good to have the right tool for the job. Now on a curved wall, the reason I staggered my joint this way is so that I'm finishing a joint where I'm standing up like a normal human being. Instead of doing the second coat with the two foot piece down there, you want to stagger your joint or it's guaranteed to crack, okay? The stuff is too flexible not to. Now you've got the strength of that other sheet in behind here, and you can follow the curve with your tools to fill in all your, your joints. Now, if you're not sure how to do joints in drywall, click a link up here or check the video description down below. We'll link some of our best drywall video teaching series to help you get this task done. Once you're done with your mud, everything continues to follow the curve. It's like the grain in wood. You want to sand with it. You want to sand with it when you're sanding your drywall. You want to paint on that curve this way. You can't go this way or you'll have a line at the front and back of the roller, okay? So everything you do from here on in is all about following this curve and you will be able to paint and finish like a pro, okay? But now we're gonna teach you how to do the trim work because there's some industry secrets here that if you don't know, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Industry secret number one, baseboard, if you buy thin stuff that's MDF and not wood, is already designed to go against the curve wall. Line it up. Done. Okay, piece of cake. The next thing you've got, of course, is the quarter round. I'm gonna get questions, oh, you know what, if you're a good carpenter, you don't use quarter round. The truth is, I don't care what kind of carpenter you is, on a, on a curved wall, you need this stuff, because your flooring is not gonna be cut perfectly to the corner. So this is designed to go on after the curve. This is quarter round. Traditionally, it comes in softwood lumber that we get from Brazil. All right, this is rubber. Just about as well. But you'll see, if you try to use this into the metal track system, it'll backfire on you. So, I would suggest going down, avoid all the screws and the heavy gauge track, and you can install this just about anywhere. And I know right now some of you are thinking, wait a minute, Jeff, what if I have really nice thick baseboards in my house? What if I have three quarter inch with a gorgeous detail, six inch tall, and I want a curved wall? Good news. If you go to your custom trim shop where they sell this material, because you don't get this at Home Depot, they can also custom order you any of the trims that they have in stock from the mill in this rubber material, so you can continue your profile of whatever's going on in your house and get a perfect look. Now, it's also gonna be about $200 for every eight feet. So, you get to consider how many curved walls you want in your house. <laughs> they can also do the same with archways around half moon windows and that sort of thing. And that is really all there is to this. It's a lot of the same systems, couple of different materials, but you gotta be able to realize that for every solution, every problem you run into, and in, when you're dealing with drywall, there's already a solution out there. You're not the first person to find it. Trust me. Now, curve walls are really simple. Use the steel to frame it, okay? At least the top and bottom tracks, you can use wood studs, but if you use the metal studs, your walls are perfectly straight. Get the quarter inch drywall, source that out from the supplier. It's gonna be the same place you get the drywall track, okay? And then make sure when you're gonna finish, consider your trim, because if you're gonna need to buy something custom, you're gonna need a couple of weeks lead time before that arrives, all right? Listen, I hope this information helps you out today. You're your best contractor for your home, bar none, and probably the cheapest. If this information is helpful, then give us a thumbs up. If you like learning inside industry secrets and tips like this, I'm happy to share everything I know. 
but we can only do one video at a time. So consider joining our membership if you're renovating and you got tons of questions, because it's a lot easier for me to help you if you're a member. We'll give you an email, you can check that out, you can contact me and I can answer questions if you send me a picture. That way you don't have to wait around for the next five years to get the answer on YouTube. <laughs> All right guys, thanks. Give us a thumbs up on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And you can click the link right here. We're going to put together a playlist for all the things that we've done about drywall cheats and hacks so that help you on your next project. We'll see you soon.